Thank you for joining me on Embracing the Journey today. I'm going to get the bad news out of the way first, and that's Whitney's not with me. She's not like just off screen and going to pop in. She will be back with me next week. Um, and we've had several weeks where we've done some different things. We've had conversations with Riley Powell, with Jade Morgan, with Greg and Patsy Hicks, and we are better for our time with them. So if this is your first time joining us on Embracing the Journey, I encourage you to go back and check out one of those conversations or just stop this and come back next week when Whitney's with me. Either one is honestly a great option. <laughs> but today I just want to talk for a few minutes about honor. The end of Romans 12.10 says, Outdo one another in showing honor. That's a verse that we're looking at in our series called Intersections, where we're walking through Romans 12, 9 through 21. So I've been thinking about honor, and then when I, when Whitney and I were on our family adventure a few weeks ago, I read this book by Miles McPherson, The Third Option, with the subtitle, Hope for a Racially Divided Nation. And uh, Miles really challenges us to reject the false dichotomies that were often handed, reject the polarization, and instead think about how we can honor people in every situation, especially those who are in our out group, who aren't part of our in group. Incredible read, very challenging. And this book and, and Romans 12.10 has just got me thinking about what does it really mean to outdo one another in showing honor? Or, as the message paraphrase says, to practice playing second fiddle. It's like practicing to be the backup quarterback. I mean, that's just, it sounds so crazy, but yet it's what Jesus did. So I just want to take a couple minutes and share some stories of honor. Some ways that I've observed people honoring others, and these have made me better. And our heart for embracing the journey is to help you all see the intersections between following Jesus in our everyday lives. So as you see how people have just honored others in their everyday lives, I hope that inspires all of us to do the same. So the first story is really simple. Um, last week at our Bradley football game, thankfully I still get to be around and you know be part of what um, all that's going on through Bradley football, and thank you Damon Floyd for that. But we come in at halftime, and our baseball coach, Travis Adams, pretty sure Matt Day helped him cook, and maybe Timmy Lynn, they had cooked barbecue and were selling it, and they had just brought barbecue and put it in our coach's office. I mean, they could have sold more of it. They could have taken it home and eaten it. There were a lot of things they could have done. But to me, this was an act of honor. Hey, it's not baseball season. It's football season. We're for you. And we want you to enjoy some good barbecue at halftime. And it was awesome. One of the best halftimes I've personally ever been a part of. So thank you, Travis and Matt and Timmy. You honored us. And that means a whole lot. I think about an email that I read from Matt Moore yesterday that I literally teared up reading. Matt is helping with a project at Public Church, um, and he's been interacting, he and I've been interacting with an incredible leader out of Atlanta who asked some great questions about our church, and Matt's response, the way he honored Public Church, honored our vision, honored the fact that we are so far from perfect, but we are um, being transformed to become more like Jesus I literally teared up reading it. I was like, Matt could have answered that in a hundred different ways, but he chose honor. And I know sometimes in email and communication, we're not face to face. It can be easy to be, how do I say this? Uh, not so honorable. <laughs> and that sometimes we're more uh, mean on paper, or behind a computer screen rather than we are in person. And yet Matt said, no, I want to take this moment and honor public church and honor me, and I was blown away by that. I think about the fact that Dr. Jay McCluskey, um, several years ago when Whitney and I were feeling led to leave North Cleveland Baptist Church, our home church, and come be a part of the start of what would become public church, it was Candy's Creek City Church at the time, that when we wanted to talk to Dr. Jay about it, well, he wanted to take us to eat, and so we went to Jenkins, the old Jenkins, if you've been around Cleveland for a while, which, by the way, I served while, there while I was in college, so I um, really enjoyed serving. So for all of you guys who are serving, I love it, and please tip your servers well, well for crying out loud. Uh, but Dr. J wanted to take us to eat, and over lunch we shared what we felt like God was calling us to do, and he was incredibly supportive. In fact, North Cleveland has this slideshow of pictures that plays called Where in the World is North Cleveland? And it's incredible. They celebrate people that have left their church 
to go do ministry and to go serve in other places. How honorable is that? They're, they're, practice playing, they're practicing playing second fiddle. They're saying it's not about North Cleveland Baptist. It's about the kingdom of God. And we get to be a part of sending somebody out. We are going to celebrate that. And then I think about Tony Miles. Tony is an incredible friend. She's been on Embracing the Journey. Go back and listen to that if you haven't. I mean, she's phenomenal. She spoke um, at our public church gathering a few weeks ago and just so amazing the ways Jesus used her but I remember being in our home we were recording Embracing the Journey and Austin Burns who is now at DTS in Dallas Fort Worth side note last night Austin and Mitchell Hartley got to see the Dodgers win the World Series I'm like I'm not a Dodgers fan I am a Clayton Kershaw fan but they got to witness history that was awesome so anyway Mitchell and Austin got to experience that last night which is incredible back to Tony and honor (laughs) So Tony's at our house and Austin is here to press play and make sure nothing messes up as we're recording. And Tony asks him questions. What are you doing? And she speaks life over him about a situation that he was really struggling with. And it's like, Tony's not here for Austin. She's here for us to ask her questions, yet she values him so much that she leaned in, asked questions, and spoke directly into his situation. Outdo one another in showing honor. That's what Tony dead. So these stories really inspire me to think about how can I, in my everyday life, practice playing second fiddle? How can I outdo someone else in showing honor? And I hope that it helps you think about that as well. And I'll end with this. In N.T. Wright's translation of the end of verse 12, he uses the word compete, which I love. I'm a competitor. I want to compete. He says, compete with one another in showing mutual respect. Again, honor. And so the statement that I've been thinking about as I processed N.T. Wright's translation is let's not compete for honor. Let's compete at showing honor. Because especially in the business world, in really any type of world where there's a position at stake, it can be easy for us to compete for honor, compete for the role, compete for the credit. And instead, what Jesus challenges us to do through Romans 12 is let's not compete for honor. Let's compete at showing honor. So maybe you're in a situation where you're neck and neck with somebody for a particular role, a particular slot, a particular project. Obviously, go try to get it. I mean, we want to do well at our jobs. But also, just encourage you to think about in that moment, how can we also compete at showing honor? to practice playing second fiddle, to outdo one another in showing honor. Jesus followers, I think if we do that, Jesus will use us to change the world around us. And for those of you who don't follow Jesus, man, it's one of the reasons we follow him is because he meets us in your everyday life and he challenges us to honor people. So love you guys. Next week, Whitney's back. Um, But hope that this was helpful and beneficial for you. See you soon.